Hey guys, you want to see how we upgraded the interior of this RV? Stay tuned and enjoy the video. So all of our countertops and table in the RV are made out of Medex MDF, which is a water resistant MDF. After it's sanded and routered on the edges so that we have a quarter inch round over, I'm prepping it with the stone coat countertop white undercoat. I'll do two coats sanding lightly in between each coat and then I'll let it dry for four hours and be ready to go to the next step which is pour the epoxy. When prepping in place we use a three and wheel plastic. We'll cut it to fit the area making sure to leave us plenty of room to walk around. We have a complete video showing how to prep for a pour in place. After we put down the plastic I like to come back over the top with brown contracting paper. The brown contracting paper will absorb any of the epoxy that's dripped and help it not to stick to your shoes or the plastic. Many times if you drip the epoxy on the plastic and then step in it, it will pull the plastic away from the taped areas. Okay, so in this project, we're gonna be using the art coat as opposed to the regular stone coat countertop epoxy because we're doing a white finish. The art coat has a lot of UV protection and will help with any ambering down the road. All right, so I like to pour part B first. It just lets me uh, get a more accurate measurement because part B is actually a little less dense, a little, uh, I guess you would call it thinner maybe. It is a one-to-one. -one. Now, when I put part A in, because A is thicker, or more dense, I guess, or viscous, it's gonna fall down through part B. And I get a little better, more accurate reading without having to wait. Start off very slow when I'm mixing it, and being very careful not to hit the sides of the bucket. So after I mix it for two minutes, I'll come in with a stick and I'm gonna scrape my edges. And the reason I'm scraping my edges is to take any of that material that wasn't properly mixed or thoroughly mixed off the sides and then stir it into the rest of the product. So I do this two or three times, hand stir and scrape. Now each product line will have a different set of mixing instructions, so no what your mixing instructions are for the product that you're using. We're using stone coat countertop, and with this technique, I have never had any sticky spots when I pour. Now, a way to be able to check and make sure that you're properly stirring your material or mixing it is after you pour your material out on your project, the way we save our buckets is we turn the bucket upside down, and in a couple of days, we just pull the plastic out or the pull the resin out. When you pull out the epoxy, it should come out in one nice piece like this, and there should be no sticky spots here. If you're finding that the sides of your bucket are sticky, what that should tell you is that uh, you're not mixing the product thoroughly enough. So that's why it's really important to scrape those edges and mix it into the total product. Now let's add some color. All right, so for this finish, we're gonna be using basically three colors, that's it. We're gonna do a clear, a cup full of clear, and we're gonna add a little bit of diamond dust, because you gotta have diamond dust, you know, that just takes it over the top. Then we're gonna do a white opaque, and then we're gonna use the same dye, but we're gonna do it very, very transparent. I, I really don't want it to be opaque, I wanna almost be able to see through it. And then we're gonna be using a product from Just Reg Resin, and it is pearl white. This is one of my very, very favorite pearly white colors. It's, um, you can get it off Artist Till Death's website and we will have a link in the comments for this. And it's a fabulous product, very highly pigmented. All right, so now we've measured our surface and we're doing three ounces per square foot. So I've mixed up 22 ounces all right, so I'll have a little gray. Uh, my first one is clear with the diamond dust. Now I don't want my diamond dust to take over the piece, so I'm not gonna add a ton of diamond dust. So I've got about that much. 
and then I'm gonna show you. It's really not super crazy. It's just gonna give it some, some depth, all right? Now this I want to be opaque enough where I can't see through it to my grain on the stir stick. Make sure you mix it up really well. So it's very opaque. And this is the uh, Alumalite white opaque dye. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with this. But what I'm gonna do, because I don't want it to be opaque at all, is I'm gonna take some that I've already mixed and I'm gonna put it in the clear. Definitely want it more opaque than that. Another little trick that you can do is put it on the table and I can very lightly pick up the product until I get the opacity that I'm looking for. And I think I'm there. Yes. Looks just very milky. Then we're gonna come in with the Just Resin. Look at that. And I want this to be an opaque. Look how easy that blends and mixes. Now, if you can't or you don't have this product, like I said, you can order it off of Artist Till Death's website. Or if you have another pearl, you can definitely substitute. You can substitute any of these colors, but these are the products that I really like to use and work really well. Okay, so now we're gonna make a gray and I'm going to add one little drop of my white. It's not too opaque. I'm gonna make it a little bit more opaque than that. All right, now I'm gonna come in with a tiny bit of black. And this you want to be very careful. I don't want this to overpower. See this? That's all I'm doing. And I can build and see that right there is almost too gray. Actually, that's exactly where I want it to be. Okay, we're ready to get started. All right, so I'm gonna use my tool of choice, which is a Bondo spreader. Um, I use these a lot. Gives me a really soft, melded look. All right, so we're gonna start off with our white opaque. Literally, I'm going to randomly put this down. I don't wanna put it in a pattern. I don't wanna go back and forth. I want it to be just a pattern. Now I'm gonna save, I'm not gonna scrape my cup because I'm gonna save the what's in there for later. All right, that was the white opaque and now I'm gonna come in with the pearl and I'm just gonna go in between. Again, I'm really not overthinking it. And again, I'm gonna save some in my cup. Now we're in for the translucent white. Now the reason I'm doing a white translucent and an opaque white is I'm gonna get depth built that way. It's gonna give me different levels and I'm gonna go ahead and scrape this. I'm not really worried. I'm not gonna use this later. And then the last thing is the diamond dust that's in our clear. Now I'm just kind of going and getting it in my open spots. Now if you don't want this finish to have any bling, you can leave the diamond dust out you don't have to add it to your clear. Again, the reason we're using clear is because that's gonna help us build our depth. All right, so I'm gonna let it sit for just a second, let it start to kind of meld out a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna torch it. Bondo spreader. I'm holding it with two fingers. So I'm just skip trialing, basically is a kind of a technique that I like to call it. And all I'm doing is melding these two colors to where they're basically covering the sample board. You don't want to over meld because you want a definite separation in your colors. If I over meld, then basically all I'm doing is making one color. If you have any big chunks of color and you want to break it up a little bit, you can pull the material over. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I've got some to the side. Now I'm just gonna take my hand and I'm gonna push it over the edge. I'm still being really careful not to over meld. So we've rounded the edges of the countertop with quarter inch round over bit. And what that does, it allows this epoxy to flow and not have surface tension. And that's how we get really pretty edges. I don't push 
a lot of that product over my edge. But what I do push over, I like to take my hands and run it underneath. And that way, as that epoxy rolls down, it won't form a lip on the edge. It'll take that epoxy and roll underneath and again, give me really good edges. I'm gonna torch a little bit. Now I'm very careful not to torch my edges too much. What'll happen is if I torch my edges a lot, all of that epoxy uh, will get really thin and fluid and it'll run off. So unless I really have to, I try not to torch those edges. This could be a finish all by itself, but don't tell anybody. We're gonna go to the next step. We know that we're gonna add a little bit of gray to this finish. The customer has a little bit of gray in their backsplash, so they wanna bring out that gray with this. So this is the little bit of gray that I mixed up with the two opaque tints, and we're just gonna very randomly, and, and they don't want a lot. All right, so we're gonna let that sit for just a minute. We had a little bit of the black left on here. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker, you can see and I'm gonna retint what's in my cup so I get a darker shade now. It's not gonna be a lot of difference, but it'll be a little bit of difference. So when I lay this down, we'll have some depth. All right, make sure you get near your edges so that it, as it rolls over, we can have some color on the edge. All right, back to my Bondo spreader, and I'm gonna very, very lightly meld this not over melding. We want there to be a little bit of a pattern there. And as the epoxy continues to move, they'll soften up and get a little less distinct. All right, so I have distinct lines and I really don't want distinct lines, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the drips and I'm just gonna very softly touch those edges so as they continue to roll, it won't be a straight line. This I'm liking. All right, I'll torch it a little bit. Not gonna use a lot of heat on this because I don't want it to move too terribly much because it'll really soften the pattern. Now I'm gonna let these set just a little bit and then we'll come back in about 15 minutes and I'm gonna take the epoxy that I left in my cup and we're gonna do a little bit more detail work. So we'll be back in just a second. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes. Now we're gonna come back with the epoxy that started to set up in the cup. The reason that we wait is because we want the epoxy that's on the surface to start to, to thicken up just a little bit. And also the epoxy that's in the cup. And the reason we do that now, when I go to lay down some very, very thin little veins, they're not gonna move, meld, and soften out like the veins that I laid out 15 minutes ago. They've started to really soften out and they'll continue to soften um, but now that I'm coming in with epoxy that's a little more set up in this cup, they'll be a little bit more distinct. All right, so we're gonna come over and I'm gonna be very lightly, I'm just gonna lay them down. Now this is white, and even though we already have white on the top, I'm not really worried about that because they're still gonna show up, just they'll be a little bit different shade and it'll give some depth. Now I have a big blob right here, but I'm not worried about that because I can kind of torch that out and get it to move a little bit. The longer you let your epoxy sit in the cup, the thicker it's gonna be. And therefore, the more distinct your little vein lines will be. So if you really want them to stay super tiny, super distinct, you may want to wait a little longer than 15 minutes. Now I'm coming in with the pearl and I'm gonna do the same thing. Very random. Don't get yourself caught in a pattern doing this. You want this to be very random and very organic. Very soft, I love these. I'm gonna come in with a little bit of the diamond dust if I have a little left. This is the clear that had the diamond dust. These will make some really pretty glittery type veins. All right, very light torching. Again, you don't wanna hit with too much heat because what will happen if we put too much heat, it's gonna re-liquefy, I guess, or make the epoxy a little more fluid and it's all gonna run over again. We can take some drips from the edges also. You could run those over the top. Now onto the RV.
Okay, well here we go. We're gonna pour all of the countertop space basically at the same time. So this is my white opaque and this is my white transparent. All right, and th this is our white pearl. And now my clear, and we put the diamond dust in the clear. All right, so I'm just gonna continue to meld this together, being very conscious that I don't over meld it because I know I still have to bring in the gray and I don't wanna get everything over mixed at this point. I'm just trying to get the surface covered. Now, I did not take my backsplash, if you'll notice. Uh, I've done this quite a few times, so I'm super careful of how I push the resin up against the backsplash. If you do feel like you need a little bit of a security of having that tape, just make sure that you pull it before your epoxy sets up, so that way it won't rip your tape and um, cause you to have to uh, either pick it out with a knife or something. So just make sure that you, you do that before it gets stuck. All right, I'm not gonna dress my edges just yet. I want it to set up just a little bit more. I'm gonna come over here and do everything here. Again, I'm not gonna over meld. I want those big areas of color blocks. Now you could do this with a chop brush as well. I just like the design that the Bondo spreader gives me. Drizzle the gray. I can always add more, so I don't want to get too crazy with it. Some areas all have heavier type lines and then some very thin. Let that sit up for a little bit. Then we'll come add a few more lines and add some white accent veins as soon as it sets up a little bit more, probably about 15 or 20 minutes. We turn the AC off so it's pretty warm in here. So my open time's gonna be a little shorter than it was when I did this in my studio. So now that our color coat is dried for 24 hours, I'm coming in with a clear flood coat. The clear flood coat will then dry for 24 hours and we'll go to the next step, which is applying the ultimate top coat in natural matte. Oh my God. You like it? Rhonda, there's, holy cow. <laughs> Girl, looks good. You nailed it. All right. Whoa. Hey guys, I'm here with Courtney with The Flipping Nomad. And her and her mom are a crazy, awesome duo that go in and just transform RVs. So what we've done is we've actually taken the uh, countertops out. We've constructed new countertops and poured a brand new finish. So Courtney, what do you think about these? I love them. I love them so much, but to look at them, they're beautiful, which somebody would fall in love with just with that. But one thing that we run into with RVs that's so difficult is finding products that are beautiful like this, but also lightweight mm -hmm. and that can hold up to the rigors of the road. So I have an extra love affair with okay. what you do <laughs> and, awesome. and the solution that epoxy provides for us. And I mean, I would also think people have asked me, well, what about the fact that RVs twist and turn and all of that? There's, there's so much flexibility to a point built in to these countertops that you can't get with granite, mm -hmm. yes. right? Good. Okay. Yes, absolutely. And granite is super duper heavy too yeah. and fairly fragile too. And with RVs, weight is the name of the game. And so that's one thing that is so difficult for us is, you know, making sure that we're not over weight capacity, mm -hmm. but still making it beautiful. It's such a hard line to walk. And then exactly. you also get the issues of temperature fluctuation. Yeah. And so you got to pay attention to if the rig's going to go into storage in the summertime in Arizona with no air conditioning, right. 
or storage in South Dakota in the winter with no heater, sure. it's got to be able to stand up to those temperature fluctuations too. And so epoxy is just like our how about Our showers? Table. How about showers? Showers too, showers too. You've done a couple of mm -hmm. countertops for mm -hmm. us yet. We haven't had a rig that you've been able to do a shower yet, but- I can't wait. It's, I can't wait either. It's I might do a special one just to have you do oh, the shower, good. but that's another thing. Like we can't do real tile as a shower. It's just not an option because of weight and with the road vibration. And so we've had this other product that we've worked with, but it's very limited and, um, it, it does add a little bit of weight, not nearly as much as real tile, mm -hmm. but you can do, you can pour on yeah. foam, right. which weighs less than Nothing. what the manufacturers install. It's like right. mind blowing how yeah. perfect it is. So when we do a shower install, we'll make sure to let you guys see that. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate every single one of our subscribers. Check out our website, rk3designs.com for further pictures of this project and all of the products used.